going to go ahead and get started. I am so excited to be in person. This is super cool. So anyways, let's go ahead. I'm calling to meeting to order at 6.04 p.m. I'm going to do a roll call. My board colleagues, so I'll go down the line. Raquel Alvarez. Here. Mike Blessing. Here. Eric Joyce. Here. And Eleanor Evans. Here. All right. All present and accounted for. Moving on to item 2B, Pledge of Allegiance. So I'm going to turn this over to, we have a student from Del Rio. So if everybody would stand. We could do a countdown. Put their right hand over their heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag, one United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisibly, and justice, and justice for all. All right. Our first, oh, this is going to be fun. So we're going to have Mrs. Schramm's class go ahead and and Ms. Hoffman, sorry, um, from fourth grade at Del Rio. So I'll turn it over to the principal to give us a little preview. Good evening, Dr. Began, members of the board, and Superintendent Dr. Vitale. Thank you for having our Del Rio fourth graders. They're amazing and fantastic teachers, Alyssa Schramm and Liz Hoffman. They're here to perform for you today. They've been learning all about California history, and they are currently immersed in the gold rush. So they're going to be performing a, a song from their play Gold Duster Bus that they'll be performing on April 26th and 27th. We'd love to have you attend if you'd like to come. Um, tonight they're singing the song Our Little Secret, giving us a glimpse into how gold was discovered by James Marshall at Sutter's Sawmill. Thank you. 
That was awesome. What a way to kick off our first in-person meeting. All right, we'll move on to the agenda, item 2C, public report of action taken in our closed session. Item 1C, public employee appointment principal. By a vote of 5-0, the board took action to approve CSR Mora as the new principal of Lincoln Middle School. Woo! Stand up. Congratulations. The board, by a vote of 5-0, also took action to approve Jonathan Penular as a new principal for Jefferson Middle School. Item 1D, public employee discipline, dismissal, and release. By a vote of 5-0, the board took action to terminate the employment of employee ID number 504293, a permanent classified employee assigned as a special education paraprofessional. By a vote of 5-0, the board also took action to terminate the employment of employee ID number 622490, an accounting technician. All right, moving on to item 2D, student representatives. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call up Surfside, Evan Hemmerly. Hi, Evan. You are tall in person. <laughs> Tell us what's going on at Surfside. Good evening, school room members, Dr. Vitale, and guests. Oh, good catch. My name is Evan Hammerly, and I'm the student representative for Surfside Educational Academy this evening. Congratulations to our March Students of the Month. Isaiah Holland was chosen from Surfside High School, and Matthew Lopez was chosen from Surfside Academy. Both students received a certificate of recognition and a Surfside t-shirt. Surfside teachers and staff selected Isaiah and Matthew from a list of nominations. Both students are juniors and were nominated based on their academic growth, their accountability to self, and self-direction. Overall, classroom performance. Keep up the good work, Isaiah and Matthew. Jasmine Perez was selected as the April recipient of the, of the C City of Oceanside Chamber of Commerce Rising Star Award. Jasmine, a Surfside senior, is a hardworking young lady. She has faced very difficult situations in her life and has met them with strength and perseverance. She is on track to graduate in June and plans to attend Miracosta in the fall with a major in sociology and mental health counseling as her focus. The Hyatt Hotels offered a interview workshop to students interested in learning about employment opportunities with Hyatt. On Tuesday, March 25th, 15th of those students were chosen to apply, were chosen to apply, were interviewed for current positions, many of whom left with jobs and offers. Students who were hired became members of the Hyatt Junior Task Force. Through this program, students serve in many different departments within the hotels. Miracosta College hosted its annual Barrio Empowerment Conference on Wednesday, March 30th. Our students took part in a workshop such as Find Your Future, Imposter Syndrome, Mental Wellness, and several others. They also had a, the privilege of hearing keynote speaker Alex Montagna, author of You Got This, A Sacred Journal to Wellness, Surfside left with the confidence with a greater awareness and understanding of opinions of their future and to continue pers to pursue their dreams. Surfside celebrated its last grad walk of the school year, March 25th. There were plenty of support from family and friends who came out to celebrate our graduates. The event showcase collaborated both Surfside High School and Surfside Academy traditions. 
which included a walk around down the school's main hallway, a ringing of the bell, and photos with family and friends. Congratulations to all of our early grads. A few weeks ago, Junior Achievement reached out to Surfside to provide an opportunity to pilot one of their pop-up learning series. Students overwhelm, overwhelmingly voted for the stock market pop-up, which allows them to learn the stock market basics and importance of investing in their future. Surfside worked with Junior Achievement to secure dates for this series. There's a video that's Hi, my name is Anna Ryan. I'm the Career Guidance Tech here at Surfside. And last Thursday, we went to visit the Maricosta College Technology Career Institute. And it was a really good experience for our students. They got to see things about robotics, about uh, machinery, um, real estate even, and all kinds of different certificate programs that normally aren't offered in general um, junior college campuses. So they really had a good time, asked a lot of questions, came away with another option and that's basically what we always want to do for our students is give them plenty of options so uh, great time that we had thank you goes out to maricosta college tci for hosting us and allowing us to come by and visit their um, really really amazing facility hi my name is papa i'm one of the students that attended the maricosta tci field trip and one of the things i found interesting with that i've but that I found interesting was the engineering and like how the engineers minds work and how they do like all the tiny details in like all the automobiles or automotives and the 3D sculptures. It's very interesting. Hi, my name is Travis Lommer and I went on the TCI uh, Maricosta College field trip. Um, a couple things I take away from it was I like to explore my different opportunities. Um, and in doing so, and in going to that field trip helped me do so. Um, I liked how it was very involving. I liked the um, the socialness of it. I liked collaborating with people for the um, for the marshmallow challenge. Um, I'm glad that the people there were so friendly and nice and had a bunch of different questions that they could answer and help a lot of the students understand exactly what that college field is. And I like I said, I like exploring my different opportunities. So, and I liked how a lot of the stuff kind of related to me because I am more of a mechanical kind of guy, so I was glad that I got to experience that on the field trip. Now, I really enjoyed the tour that they gave us. I would have to say my favorite part was probably just figuring out that they they have so many much more things to offer to us, and I think it's a very welcoming community. Um, another one that I did like was the team bonding at the end of the tour. Uh, with spaghettis and uh, marshmallows and we had to make a tower. I think that really got me comfortable in the space that they um, brought to us. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. Awesome. We'll go ahead and go with Oceanside High School, Gabby Kimbrell. Um, El <laughs> you want to be a student today? All right. <laughs> you were a student at Oceanside High, so <laughs> introduce yourself. Good evening, board, <laughs> Superintendent Vitali, and the audience. My name is Skylar Garcia. I'm the proud principal of Oceanside High School, so thank you for having me. Mm. Next slide, please. So our past events that we've been going over are our cask testing, our new pirate day and night, community events, our show choir sound off, and we also had the Willie Banks 9th Annual Invitational Track and Field event. Next. So on March 9th, Oceanside High School welcomed eighth graders from our local middle schools and their parents for a taste of what Oceanside High School has to offer. It was an amazing event and we had over 250 uh, parents and students come for the nighttime, so it was fantastic. And here's a video.
yourself. I hope you do successful, and I hope you do a great job in high school, and I'll see you in the future. Bye. So the video is also shot and edited by our students, which is a really proud moment for us. So here's some more pictures. We had the nighttime event as well um, with our show choir performing, our OTC was out there, as well as our cheer squad. Next slide, please. So again, uh, what we have coming up is our Earth Day events, our 418 to 422. We have some great sports going on with our girls water polo, advancing to the Division Three semifinals for the first time in school history, as well as our softball is doing an amazing job. We have the band annual donation drive. We had our Soundwave show choir, which was last week, or actually, I'm sorry, that was two weeks ago, and it was absolutely fantastic. Chandra Feist, one of our CTE teachers, won the Lapsin Teacher Award and Barrio Empowerment Trip to Miracosta College. Next slide, thank you. And these are some pictures showing those amazing events. So as I said, we were honored to have our show choir. It was 33 show choirs that were able to perform at Oceanside High School. It was an amazingly large event that was done in six days because we had some cancellation from another event. And so the OUSD, um, amazing OUSD, and we're talking all OUSD, not just OHS. We're talking o OUSD maintenance, operations, facilities, uh, custodial staff. I mean, it was a very large event and we were able to pull it off in six days. So that speaks to how much we really care for our students and for the 33 other choirs that were so happy because they were going through a little PT PTSD thinking that it was gonna be canceled again and it wasn't. So we satisfied all of them too. So it was an amazing event. Next slide, please. Our OHSMCJROTC students did a run bike safety event at one of our local elementary schools as well, supporting them and receiving some community service hours. And again, congratulations to our AOG instructor for her honor of the Lapson National Honor Teacher Award. And upcoming events, we have OHS mock trial team traveling to Washington, D.C., which will be on the 27th. We're looking forward to that. We have our SABRE awards for our honoring our athletic athletes, as well as AP testing, end of the year choir and music events, hello, goodbye assembly for our juniors and seniors, and our OHS summer opportunity program information should be coming out this week. And that's it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Our next student representative, Liliana Tita from El Camino High School. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Great. <laughs> All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you to board president, Dr. Biggin, and the rest of the board members, to superintendent, Dr. Vitality, and our executive staff, and to all who are present this evening for giving me the time to speak. My name is Lily Tita. I'm the ASB president and student representative from El Camino High School. Starting off this week of February 28th to March 4th, our APSU hosted an Asian culture night with dancing, music, and food. We are proud to present the ECHS Teacher of the Year Award to Mrs. Valetti and Mrs. Vasquez this year. Saturday, our drumline placed first in their first competition, and our athlete of this week was Nolan Min Miller, a boys tennis player who won four of five of his matches in the first serve tournament. The following week of March 7th through the 11th, our chamber choir held their first con spring concert in the theater and through the assets program, a few of our students had the opportunity to go to a local studio for some hands-on fun. Media Makers has partnered with EC students to have an opportunity to attend their training camp free of charge to be trained in digital media production using state-of-the-art equipment at their fully operational studio. The athlete of the week for this week was Tripler, a boys volleyball player who earned MVP at the Firebird Classic and led the Wildcats to the championship league. Congratulations to, the, to our Wildcats who have received player of the year in their league. 
Aliyah Anderson and Nariah Smith, Coastal League Co-Players of the Year for Girls Basketball, and Adrian A.J. Ramiro, Avocado League Player of the Year for Boys Soccer. Continuing the week of March 14th through 18th, some of our Wildcats decided to show off their amazing talents by participating in the annual talent show. This week, ASB put on our March Madness tournament where teams of students compete against each other in 3v3 tur basketball tournaments during lunch. The winning team got to play against our team of teachers in a staff versus students game where, the winning, where students ended up winning 15 to eight. The athlete of this week was Jade Incognicio, who led the Wildcat softball team with two home run victories over University City and Crosstown rivals, the Oceanside Pirates. Our rising star of the month was Angela Hernandez Lira, a dedicated El Camino student who has overcome personal obstacles during her high school years. She will be the first generation high school graduate and college student. The next week of the 21st through the 25th, our Wildcats were able to participate in hands-on activities with current students in the Biomedical Equipment Technician Program and the Electrical Technician Program. EC senior Conan was surprised to find out that he was the recipient of the Army JROTC scholarship, which will pay full tuition to a university of his choice. Upon graduation from college, Conan will be commissioned as a second lieutenant in the US Army. The athlete of the week this year, week was Melanie Sebaeus, a track and field standout who medaled in the 300 and 100 hurdles and took home first place in the triple and long jump. Finishing out the week of March 28th to April 1st, our Wildcats enjoyed our April Fool's Spirit Week, which consisted of Mean Day, Just Like Your Favorite Teacher Day, Just Like Your Favorite TV Character Day, Just Like a Celebrity Day, and Anything But a Backpack Day. Congratulations to Nadia Garcia, who has been selected by an American Legion Auxiliary Oceanside Unit 146 to represent El Camino at the 2022 California American Legion Auxiliary Girl State Session in June. Congratulations to Victoria Flores, who is part of the ECHS Code Queens. She was recently, recently acknowledged by the National Center for Women's and Informational Technology as a 2022 Greater San Diego Affiliate Honorable Mention. She also received the award for Aspirations in Computing. Victoria also participated in the Cal State San Marcos Virtual Hackathon, where she and her team placed second. Here are some athletic highlights for EC. Softball beat Crosstown Rivals OHS and is currently 11 and 14 overall. Swim defeated RBV for their first victory of the season. Boys Volleyball won the 2022 De Lago Firebird Classic Championship and is currently 21 to five overall and fourth in Avocado West League. Boys Tennis defeated Ramona for the first victory of the season and is currently three and three overall. Track and Field star athlete Melanie committed to UC Riverside for track and field. Thank you all for giving me the time to present. This concludes my presentation. Thank you, Liliana. Um, we'll move on to item 2E, approval of the agenda. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move. move. I'll second. All right, we have a first and a second. All in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 All right, motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item three, reports. I'll turn it over to Dr. Vitelli. Thank you, Dr. Begin. I have a couple of things to report. I'd like to announce our two classified employees of the year. Donna Contrado, health technician from Palmquist Elementary. Carlos Rosso, day lead custodian from here at Chavez Middle School. And our two certificated employees of the year, Christina Vasquez from El Camino High School and Rebecca Michelli from Del Rio Elementary School. Congratulations. We also had the op opportunity to acknowledge our students in the month of March at the Oceanside Chamber of Commerce Rising Stars. And I would like to acknowledge Angel Gomez Galvan from Surfside Educational Academy, Sabria Mosley from Oceanside High School, Angela Hernandez Lira from El Camino High School, and Landon Anthony from Pacific View Charter School. Congratulations to all of them. Um, yeah, you can clap, that's great. 
We also had the opportunity to attend the Oceanside Police Department Employee Recognition Ceremony, uh, which was earlier in March. And I'd like to announce and share that our Oceanside High School robotics team, they call themselves the Wild Raccoons, competed in the first robotics competition at Del Mar Fairgrounds, and out of 52 teams attending, the OHS rookie team finished 17 of 52, earning them the title Rookie Inspiration Award. Woo! So, congratulations, Oceanside. All right, we're gonna do board reports. I'm gonna turn it over to Raquel Alvarez. Uh, good evening, thank you everybody for being here. Thank you um, just for giving us a moment. Um, I did a walk around in Libby with, met with some teachers and some staff there and it was just fun just to be again back at the campuses, enjoying the students and seeing them in their real life, just kind of just going and just being kids and I love that. So thank you for having me there because I just love doing that. And, um, I went to a tech committee meeting um, where we talked about just different things that are going on with our tech stuff and the growth that we have there. And I went to also a special ed um, task force meeting, um, which is very interesting. And I'm thankful that the staff and everybody that was able to attend that, that we were able to just hear the honest truths of what they feel and what's going on with that part of SPED. And um, thank you for that. I went to the new pirate day, which go pirates. Um, um, <laughs> so um, that was awesome because again seeing the kids and just welcoming and just all the amazing things and all the pathways that we have and just the amazing things that they're doing with the pathways and it just made it inspired me even you know to do things differently at home so thank you for that um, to our students because they were just they were willing to answer whatever questions you had and they were open and just wanting to just share so that was amazing um, I also went to um, an Oceanside volleyball tournament because um, my kid was playing, um, but did that and that was great to see because they did amazing. Um, I, I also um, am working with um, the theater group out at San Luis Rey. So we're back to that and doing, um, getting ready for our big um, show for that. Um, I went to the Chamber um, Rising Star. It's a show. And that was awesome. Um, our students have gone through so much, and so many of our students, and, and not, not everybody, we can't always um, celebrate every student that we have because there's just, there's so many, there's so much greatness going on within our district. But the stories that they shared, I mean, we had to have a box of tissues at our table because it was just amazing. Um, and there's, and the, the gifts that they have, and they're able to share them with us and, and just their stories. And, but again, sharing the gifts that they have internally within them they just openly shared them, and that was amazing. Um, going again to the OPD um, employee recognition. Here in those stories, we needed a box of tissue there too, um, just because of the things that they do, but even the things that they do for our students and how they support our students and our families within our community. So seeing that of, of just the greatness within just our, our SROs and everybody that we have within our campuses, seeing what they do for our students and how they support them, that was amazing to see because we don't always get to see all that. I don't get to always see it as much as I'm on a campus and because of COVID, we weren't able to see a lot of this stuff, but they were even during COVID, they were doing things for our students and they were supporting our families. So hearing that and, and actually he, being able to see it because some of them, were, they did videos for it. We were able to see what, how they were able to support them. So thank you to them. Um, and I think that's about it. All right, I'll turn it over to Eric Joyce. All right, um, so I got to, I had the chance to go to several different events because of the break with my work. So uh, one thing that really stood out was the OHS Sound Waves, the competition that they held. I wasn't able to do the feature night, but I did get to see the Sound Waves, seeing uh, the Power Rangers themed <laughs> concert, which was so much better than it sounds. It's so good. <laughs> Uh, my six-year-old could not take his eyes off the stage, and it was really just a special, uh, it was a special performance. Um, at the same time, the track meet, the Willie Banks track meet was going on, so we were running outside and catching races and watching the pole vaulters go over and then running back inside and listening to the chorus. It's just exciting to see the kids doing the amazing things that they do when they have the space and they're empowered to do it, so I'm so excited. 
to have all the kids back on. Uh, the same time I was able to go by Laurel Elementary and see some really cool work that the teachers are doing there. Um, I had the great pleasure of attending the Eastside Neighborhood Association meeting and bringing the good news about the NPR and gym that is coming to Jefferson and that community was so excited to hear about that investment coming into that space. Uh, speaking of investment, that Soundwaves competition was a great show off of Prop H investments, so <laughs> didn't want to forget that. Um, I got to like guest coach with the Surfside High flag football team for a couple of days, which was probably my favorite thing to attend. <laughs> um, other than you know dealing with the, the tough field situations, it was. Uh, really cool to see the kids picking up, a lot of them were picking up a new sport that they hadn't played before and uh, getting some love from, from adults that were spending their time uh, making deposits with our youth of our future. Um, we went to an OUSD transport meeting with some county officials and talked about trying to make sure that our students have safe transport to school, seeing if there are ways that the county can support that. The really, really positive news is that as of May 1st, all children 18 and under are free on public transit. And that means that's a huge door that opens to families that they don't have to pay. Uh, this is a really great use of the county's funds. It's an investment, again, in our youth, making sure that they can access different. I went down and tried it out one morning just to see what it was like to, for a kid. And there were, uh, there happened to be an OUSD student that was taking the same route <laughs> at, to his middle school. And so we sat down and talked about it. And he talked about how he uses this in the morning to go to school. And sometimes he uses it to go to see his family in Escondido in the afternoon from the same transport. And now it'll be free for him. So um, that's really important and powerful. And then uh, I was on the, trucks, uh, the Nixie Trustee Review Committee, and we reviewed how uh, special education and upcoming legislation that we're always looking to have the federal government pay the share that they had said they were gonna pay when they enacted IDEA. So um, our congressman is fighting for that, but we have to continue to put pressure on the federal government. And then, um, I was on the 8076 update on state bills, and there is word that they are, uh, there's a bill to provide transportation to school, to community schools, for all students in public education. And that is something that went away years ago, and now it's a proposal to bring it back. Uh, it is in Appropriations Committee, so it's moving through the process, but it actually is moving forward right now, so. Uh, that's a, a very positive thing. And there's also some other updates on other very important uh, education topics, but it's for another day. So. That's it. Okay. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Eleanor. Thank you. Everyone can hear me? Yeah. Okay. I, I just want to make a comment that, because I do take the bus and the train, et cetera, et cetera, students and some adults can uh, ride free, can ride the bus free if they don't have whatever the money is token. I witness it, so, yeah. Thank you, City of Oceanside. I just want to say, you know, like, I am so proud of our students in Oceanside, even when they leave the school district. As an example, congratulations to former Oceanside High School pirate and current Cal State at Bakersfield scholar and softball player, Shalene Fumiano, for being selected by uh, the cable network ESPN as one of the top athletes of the week. Um, in their shows, it's titled Top Ten. She, I witnessed, she caught this softball on uh, third base. It was just phenomenal. It was like she flew through the air to catch it. It was fantastic. Okay. School visits. I'd like to thank Vicki Ga Gavlin, Mercedes Lovely, and um, Stacy Bagan for being able to um, enable me to attend some of the some of our outstanding schools. Our faculty is amazing. Our students are even more amazing. Um, I had the opportunity to visit at least three schools, Palm Quest, San Luis Rey, South O, and it, to see the resilience of our students, to see Common Core um, standards being implemented, 
to see the rigor that goes on in the classroom. It is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. I'm so proud of this district. So thank you, teachers. Thank you, students. Thank you, parents, for um, being a team to push our district forward. And then congratulations, of course, to all the employees of the year, and congratulations to every employee of this district. Um, as you may know, I'm one of the members of the profile of a student, and we are continuing to analyze those characteristics and qualities that we want our schools, our students to embrace, so that, um, as I mentioned earlier, so that when they become members of the community, they still will be high-achieving people, and they um, will understand what success is and set goals to achieve those kinds of success. I'm also a member of the San Diego County Tax Board Association, and I attended their um, governance and education workshop, and I was immediately drafted to be a member of their task force, and basically they will be analyzing and evaluating all systems that promote governance and um, in the county, actually, and of course, their first focus is going to be the LDAs, the local school districts. And we're looking at um, basically the committee is going to be called the Public Regional Outcome Standards Board, and its purpose will focus on the standards and methods of, of reporting public good outcome. In other words, we'll be analyzing what characteristics does a uh, high performing, high achieving school district have, and what characteristics that perhaps a district that's not quite as high achieving would have, okay? Moving on, um, today, and I almost missed it because I had uh, two phone calls from the district, but there was a Zoom meeting with um, career technical education, and they were communicating with students in New Orleans or New Orleans, um, Louisiana, at, at the school that's a, one of their programs is culinary. And it was a really, what I saw was phenomenal. You know, absolutely amazing. Um, the students prepared the food, um, of course, but you know, they were focusing on not just restaurants, but other avenues in terms of where, you know, we all have to eat. <laughs> you know, how do we do that? and um, make money, you know, and that was phenomenal, okay? Um, ethnic studies continues to be progressing, and it's a phenomenal program, and we're one of the leaders in the entire state, so thank you again, all right? And last but not least, I serve as a commissioner on the County of San Diego Human Rights Commission, and we are, um, very much involved with um, the issues countywide. Oceanside, Vista, we kind of get ignored. Everyone thinks about San Diego and those um, cities east and south, you know, of, of San Diego. But we're making progress in terms of recognizing the fact that, you know, Oceanside is a part of San Diego County. Thank you. Thanks, Eleanor. Mike Blessing? No report this evening, thanks. Mine's pretty short too, so. Um, I did a, several site visits, um, San Luis Rey, Santa Margarita, South Oceanside Elementary. Um, my son is a student here and is going to Oceanside High School, so I did New Pirate Night, which was as exciting as the principal shared, um, and he's very jazzed about going to Oceanside High School. Um, I also participated with Trustee Alvarez on the Special Ed Task Force and our LCAP committee this month and our tech committee meeting. We saw a lot of each other, apparently. Um, and um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for me. So we'll move on to item 3C, um, Oceanside Teachers Association. Yes. Tiffany Cooper Ortega, would you like to share your report? <laughs> I did not pay them to say that. Okay. Good evening, I am Tiffany Cooper Ortega and I'm pleased to be able to report on behalf of the members of the Oceanside Teachers Association as their president. Next slide, thank you. Oh, you're always on it, thank you. 
Happy April, everyone. I hope that we're all feeling refreshed after our spring break. ODA members and leadership collaborated with OUSD on the ongoing committee work listed here. Additionally, we began our internal association work to prioritize areas of improvement for our master agreement between ODA and OUSD. Next slide, please. For this month, I'd like to spotlight a teacher from El Camino High School. Go Wildcats. <laughs> Let me introduce you to Kathy Easterbrook. Mrs. Easterbrook has been a teacher at EC since 1999. She teaches expository reading, writing course, which is senior English for those of us not in the know, and AP literature. She has a son at King Middle School and two daughters in college. When she's not reviewing student work, she loves to read and complete puzzles. Let me share with you a puzzle that she tackled that has resulted in an invaluable resource to the students and families of Oceanside. No, don't go. <laughs> After watching a PBS Frontline episode on childhood poverty in 2017, Mrs. Easterbrook started the food pantry at El Camino High School. The program, known as Nourish North County, has flourished and expanded, and now serves up to 1,000 people a month and has pantries not only at El Camino High School, but also at Oceanside High School, Nichols Elementary, North Terrace K-8 School, and the Adult Transition Program. By the way, they also function during COVID in coordination with OUSD's um, food pickups. Uh, next slide, please. Nourish North County is funded entirely through private donations and most of the food in the pantries comes from the San Diego Food Bank. If you're interested in donating any of the items listed here, please contact Ms. Kathy Easterbrook at El Camino High School using the information on this slide. I'd like to thank Ms. Easterbrook for not only nourishing the minds of students at El Camino, but also endeavoring to provide this priceless resource for the students and families of Oceanside Unified. Next slide. Finally, I want to spotlight not returning to normal. So stay with me for a minute. Recently, I read an article that resonated with me considering our return to full in-person instruction, the district's commitment to social emotional learning, and the implementation of our community schools. Let me read you the entire quote by Sonia Renee Taylor. We will not go back to normal. Normal never was. Our pre-corona existence was not normal other than our society normalized greed, inequity, exhaustion, depletion, extraction, disconnection, confusion, rage, hoarding, hate, and lack. We should not long to return, my friends. We are being given the opportunity to stitch a new garment, one that fits all of humanity and nature. So ODA members are taking the opportunity to focus on things that enrich the former normal. The amazing teachers and support staff of Oceanside Unified consider the whole student when planning for student achievement, including the mental and physical health of those students, as some of the vignettes from this presentation and former ones have highlighted. Additionally, they work to ensure equity for students in their learning spaces by analyzing assumptions, expectations, language, and actions. As you can imagine, this is not a light process, yet through this work, they continue to find ways to connect our schools to the community and our students to the world. So let me reiterate that as always, I am humbled and honored to represent and work alongside these amazing, amazing educators and support their work in Oceanside Unified to make OUSD schools the choice for Oceanside community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Our item 3D, CSCA, Oceanside Chapter 370, Cindy Donaldson. Hi, Cindy. Hi. Good to be here. Good evening, Oceanside Unified School Board and Administration. Thank you for this opportunity to represent CSC 89. I'm filling in for our illustrious President Dora Haramio who's attending the Health and Welfare Symposium tonight. So she does wear many hats and I was happy to fill in for her tonight. CSEA has been very busy this last month. We just completed an election in which the COVID Safety MOU and the Professional Growth Award MOU were approved with a large majority. We also voted in a new negotiations team. Dr. McIntyre will get to meet them soon. Some very exciting news for many of our classified staff, the implementation of the CSEA, SAP, or Classified School Employees Summer Assistant Program. 
We would like to extend appreciation to our board members, Dr. Vitale and Dr. McAteer for making this program available to our members. This program will allow our members that work less than 12 months to set aside up to 10% of their income from their monthly and paychecks and have the state match those funds dollar for dollar. They will get those funds during summer when they do not receive a paycheck. This will make a huge difference to our members in trying to make ends meet during the summer months and are facing financial difficulties. We're happy to report that 405 members have signed up to participate. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. We would also like to thank you for incorporating April 13 as a Library Media Services Day. Our library media techs work very hard in their jobs have become increasingly involved and busy dealing with not only books, but with working with all the technology our students use on each of our campuses. Thank you for honoring them. And last but not least, we are extremely proud of the efforts of our classified members have made over the last two years when facing the COVID pandemic. And they continue to press forward in meeting daily challenges and making OUSD an outstanding school district that parents want their students to attend. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So we're moving on to our next agenda item, item four, general consent items. I, we have public comment for item four. 4C, 4C, yes. Well, they're all together, so. We do have a good it's all right. Call 4C first. First, we have Emily Wilson. And while Emily's getting ready, we, the board is more than happy to receive comments about items on tonight's agenda and also at the end, we take comments on items that are not on our agenda. You have three minutes to speak, and I just remind you that we're televised, and we have children and families watching, so we'll just be careful with our language. I'd like to thank the district for renewing the MOU with the, boy, with the Oceanside Library. The library has an excellent staff and is supported by volunteers for fundraisers and board positions. I've been a trustee of the li library and also I am on the foundation board along with retired teacher, counselor, and school board member Lillian Adams and retired controller for the school district, Karen Huddleston. The foundation has made uh, possible and contributed to a circulating toy collection of educational toys to promote play and learning, an establishment of early learning and community information hub at the Civic Center Library, a thousand books before kindergarten is a reading program to promote families reading with their children zero to five. Steam camp over the summer, establishment of many libraries at Melba Bishop Rec Center and El Corazon Senior Center with more in the works. Creation of an autism friendly lending library, career online high school, support of big read programming uh, community wide in our schools, uh, library furniture shelving technology such as uh, which is in the teen zone and the story center. OUSD students with their library cards as their student ID have free access to check out over 100,000 plus children and teen books, magazines and DVDs, classic books, which include classic books, book clubs and bags, magazines, educational D D DVDs, test prep books, titles, Spanish and English, easy readers and more. Also, 30,000 plus juvenile and teen ebooks and audio ebooks through Libby and Hoopla. They, they have access to educational databases online such as Tumble Books, Read Along, Storybooks, and Educational Games, uh, Help Now, which is, offers free live online uh, tutoring and homework help, National Geographic Kids and Britannica uh, Encyclopedia, and Gale Science and Environmental Studios Studies. They also have available computers, printing and scanning at any library location uh, and the bookmobile. Plus they have Chromebooks and hotspots for checkout with the library card. They also have a, a California State Park Pass for the day use for checkout with a library card. Free online and in-person programming such as homework help, story times, after school, book clubs for, for the young, bilingual book clubs for kids, tweens and teens, art and STEM classes, team volunteers, internships, opportunities, take home activity kits, kinder readiness and workshops. There's reading, summer, there's summer reading and also uh, activities in, with the lunch in the summertime. The library does not charge fines 
or fees for the overdue materials. The library is open, the Civic Center Library and Mission Branch from Monday through Saturday from 9 to 7 and Friday and Saturday from 9 to 6. The Mission Branch is open Sunday uh, from 1 to 5. Marie Town, who is the principal librarian for Youth Services, says the library is excited to be attending many upcoming back to school nights in, in uh, September, community resource centers at schools, and welcoming OUSD student class tours back at the library. Thank you. Thank you, Emily, for sharing all of that. All right. All right, hello, Todd. Hi, hi. All right, so um, it's great to be back. Um, if you've read the Coastal Academy report, you see some interesting numbers, particularly interesting given the contrast between performance by Coastal Academy and Oceanside Unified and educating the kids in our community. For those who don't know this, the charter school concept was originally invented by teachers. The president of the American Federation of Teachers once called for reforms to establish charter schools. The idea was to give education the ability to innovate and then learn from that to make improvements for all. That sounds great to me. Let's actually do it. We hear constantly that all the failures on our public education system are a result of lack of funding from the state. Let's talk about the financials a minute. In 2020-21, Coastal educated 1,800 kids with an expense of $16 million. That works out to about $9,000 per student. Same year, OSUD, o OUSD spent $232 million to educate 16,000 kids. That's $14,500 per student. That means OUSD spends almost $5,500 more per student. If it's all about money, then OUSD should be blowing the doors off of Coastal, um, shouldn't they? Our kids should be in education heaven. It's not that way. In 2021, Coastal's academic performance numbers show in, in English, 73% of their kids met or exceeded state standards, in math, 61%. OUSD's CASP numbers show in English, 52% met or exceed state standards in English, math, 31%. You mean it's possible to do a better job of educating kids with less money? Who knew? We hear we can't compare those numbers because public schools take a larger task on to educate more kids with special needs. In the report, we see Coastal has 15% of its kids on IEPs. Latest CDE numbers for Oceanside show 13% in special education programs. So I guess that's not true either, is it? Now back to using charters as an example for improvement. How do we do this? Or how do they do this? I'm sure there are many reasons, but from this report, we see Coastal's student-teacher ratio is 16 to 1. Oceanside, 22 to 1. Six more kids per teacher. Seems pretty clear from the data, Coastal is doing what OUSD's parents have said they wanted us to do over and over and over again, putting their money into reducing class sizes, which of course is not what they do here. We've often seen OUSD throw a crumb here and there to parents while throwing millions of dollars into bonus raises for employees. Maybe it's not about how much money you get, maybe it's about how you spend it. Maybe we can stop hearing the whining about not enough money from the state and take a look at the obvious example in our own backyard to find out how to get the job done. Maybe it's more about spending that money in ways that benefit our kids. We've seen over and over again what OUSD spends its money on, adults, not kids. And it's pretty clear to any thinking person that's not working. Coastal Academy proves that. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Our next speaker is Patty. Hello, Patty. This is on what item? This is uh, I, item F. Four. Patty? 4F. Four You're talking four about F, item 4F. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think it's pretty clear from Emily's presentation um, that the library officer, off the local library office, offers uh, multiple services and books for all the students, and I'm questioning the need for the amount spent at the um, school libraries when they have the resources. And it's not just, again, the money spent, but um, I was delighted to see um, the books purchase order, which we hadn't been able to 
access in the libraries. And um, this was for El Camino High, and I was surprised to see the Marvel comic books and the, and the cartoon books and things like that at that level. Um, just a quick, I only had four or five pages that I briefly went through, and I don't know if you all are probably voting on it tonight for the authorization. I don't wonder if I could see a, a show of hands, which probably what isn't available, but how many of you all voting for this expenditure actually you know, looked up the books on the 70 some pages that you're authorizing tonight? Um, any, <laughs> it's, it's a lot to look at. However, just two that I wanted to um, mention and, and question the need for, and one was my friend Dahmer. Does the name Dahmer ring a bell? It doesn't, you know, it's not a very good uh, memory for me. And the plot is, uh, depicts the author's teenage friendship with Jeffrey Dahmer, sound familiar? Who later became the serial killer during his time at uh, the junior high in Revere High School. It follows Dahmer from age 12 up, but not including his first murder two weeks after he graduated. Um, the friend that's the author, while not excusing or forgiving Dahmer's crimes, presents an empathetic portrait of Dahmer as a lonely young man. And it goes on in his binge drinking, his bizarre behavior, et cetera. I question the need of anything positive in authorizing that book in the library for our kids that already have a lot of problems. Another one is a madness so discreet, and the plot is, Grace May, a young woman from a prominent family, has been sent to reside in an insane asylum for the length of her illegitimate pregnancy. And it goes on um, uh, till she um, stabs a doctor who had been touching her. Um, again, with a few seconds left, not a real good book that I would want you to authorize tonight. And those are only two, so thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Patty. Our next speaker is Graham. Gentlemen, are you hearing me today? We um, can hear you now. There you are. There you can. Um, yes, I'm following Emily and uh, Patty, um, who spoke very elo Pat, uh, uh, Emily spoke very eloquently, I thought, explaining the approval of the MOU with the city's public library. Um, the students will, I think, will have adequate access to library books without the need to spending $42,000 on additional 2,000, over 2,000 uh, books and $20 each for $20 each and 17,000 for 667 e-books for nearly $26 each, each for a total cost to the district of nearly $60,000, which might have been more wisely spent elsewhere to further the enlightenment of our children. First of all, I'd like to say I love books. I've been an avid reader all my life, but uh, I and the public, I think, deserves uh, better accountability and justification for this expenditure. I wonder whether the district staff conducted a review of these uh, over 2,000 books and 600 odd e-books, and were these titles being pushed by a publisher supplier as a bulk uh, collection? It just seems to me it may have. On what basis were these so-called curriculum books selected? Uh, I just didn't see any um, titles fail to present a clear uh, connection between any curricula or set of curriculums. It was all over the place. Are these to replace existing books? Another question, that are to be disposed or just added to the library's inventory? The price per book, especially with e-books, seems excessively high at nearly $27 each. And I wonder, were there other bids? Is this a single bid? And if so, I don't believe that's the uh, policy of the district. So I'd like to see what other, uh, other suppliers might have provided and what quality of books they provided and at what cost. Um, lastly, or almost lastly, what is the proportion of kids that actually use libraries these days? Uh, my observation is they prefer the digital uh, reading material more than going to the library. Finally, I urge you not to approve this expenditure until these fairly basic questions are resolved. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Is that the last public comment, Micah? No. Is there another public comment on that item on four? Okay, no items. All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve general consent items. I'll move approval with no follow-up forms. I'll, I'll second. All right, do we have any questions from board members? Did we have staff review the book titles that were submitted for request? The general process, these uh, that I understand are from the library, and so librarians are the ones who make the recommendations, and they go through and approve from lists that they have that are on approved lists for kids in high schools to read. Phenomenal. Then I have no further questions. All right, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving the general consent items, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item five, personnel. Item 5A is public hearing for proposed reopeners for the 2022-2023 school year, and I'm calling the public hearing open at 7.06 p.m. And do we have any public comments, Micah? We have two public comments, one Todd Madison, the second Graham Frazier. All right. Hello, Todd. Hey. Good to see you again. It seems like it's been forever. Well, <laughs> do you, Okay, we'll take public comment. I saw this oh, item's a little oh, bit different. Sorry. Okay. Thanks. No, who can speak? No, no, go ahead and speak. I, I'm just letting everyone no, the order know that of things we're getting we here, will. So. Um, I will have staff review the items after public comment, like what they're about. So. Cool. Okay. Are we set? Yeah, you're up. Okay. Thanks, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So another reopening of negotiations. Awesome. Um, we know what the outcome will be already, though, don't we? Um, has anybody ever heard Ben Franklin quote about two wolves and a lamb deciding on what to have for dinner? Um, here we start the periodic process of the district and the unions deciding on who gets to take what size bites out of our kids' education. There will be a lot of words about doing what's best for our kids, but in the end, the district and the board will do what's best for themselves and for the special interests and approve yet another round of bonus raises for everyone. We'll hear how poorly paid everyone is. No one at the table will ever mention the fact that the district's own pay records show in 2020 the median total compensation of an OUSD administrator was $164,598. Certificated employees, $124,688. We won't hear that, though. Of course, those numbers do not include the 5% extra bonus raise that was given last year, which would make those numbers about $172,000 and $130,000, respectively. I think it's time to recognize people are being fairly paid. They have a fair contract. Um, not, we don't need to normalize greed, as I just heard here. We'll also hear how necessary it is to raise salaries to attract and retain employees. But we won't see any data proving that we have that problem, will we? Taking candies from, candy from babies just because we can seems to be the rule here, not the exception. In reality, your own stats show you get an average of five qualified applicants for every job opening. The voluntary quit rate is a fraction of what we normally see. The HR department won't even ask employees why they're leaving um, because that would generate the inconvenient data point that few very ever leave because of money. I suspect if you ask, you'd find that number very close to zero. Imagine if the board told labor groups and your own administration, we're gonna do something different for a change. We're going to somehow make do for a while and the regular periodic raises built into the normal salary schedule, forego another bonus raise, and instead put the money into things that actually improve the education of our kids. Maybe even try to get ourselves out of the bottom of the rankings in this county. Imagine if you did something financially responsible and capped the health care expense the district pays, asking your six-figure employees to pay a fraction of what parents in the district have to pay for their health care. Parents see what's being done and are taking their kids out of the public education system in droves. Imagine if the parents with kids remaining in the system rose up and demanded that you provide an education that's at least as good as the other school system in our area, who manages to do a better job with half as much money. To quote Joe Biden, don't tell me what you value, show me your budget and I'll tell you what you value. I've looked at your budget, it's pretty obvious what you value. And it's not the education of our kids. Thank you. 
Thank you. And Graham, Ms. Graham Frazier. Graham, you should have sat closer. <laughs> well, I'm not as prepared for this item as I am for the previous one. I left it in my printer. So um, I'm going to have to wing it. Um, just as we uh, last, it just seems like this is uh, deja vu. Seems like just a few months ago we were completing the negotiations that ended up costing uh, us taxpayers $10 million that drove the, the budget down to almost uh, below, uh, uh, well, not in a bankruptcy, but almost. And I fear right now that once a, I call this a kabuki pro, pro, uh, pro, uh, process, where you know the the the, um, the Oceanside uh, uh, Teachers Association, a, aka the union, uh, negotiates with uh, senior staff uh, of the district, uh, all of which are former teachers or teachers. So I, I just somehow sense uh, it doesn't quite. Uh, there's a, to me, there's a little conflict there. I don't know how that's to be resolved, but it just doesn't seem right to me. Um, what else have I got here? What I would suggest is that the, um, the, the MOUs that went back and forth uh, between the, well, not the MOUs, the letters that went from the union uh, requesting certain items be uh, negotiated or begin negotiations, there's half a dozen of them. The first one, very honest one, I thought, uh, improve the salaries. Uh, well, fair enough for honesty. Um, this, to that, the district then responded with this one and says, a lot of them somewhat similar, but uh, said these are the things we want to talk about, OK? What's notably absent here is several things. It's like, how about uh, discussing student performance and some sort of nexus between student performance and raises and salaries, and what a concept, huh? That they could actually be graded on their performance. Um, that is never mentioned, and, and I would be, be really honored to hear this board discuss that matter tonight or at some point, because I've never heard any discussion about the actual very poor performances. Todd, I just uh, relayed to you that the poor performance near the bottom of, the, of this uh, county but that's never discussed, as Todd said. So what I would ask is that you return, that, that you turn down this letter or revise this letter back to the union and put in there some requirements th uh, regarding performance of your, of your teachers for any extra money. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. All right, that's our last public comment for the public hearing, all right? I'm going to close the public hearing at 7.13 p.m. And I will turn it over to Mr. McAteer to talk about item 5B and 5C. We also have public comment on those as well. Do we? OK. Do you want to talk first? Yeah, sure. talk first. Right, so this is the uh, items 5B and C are the openings for negotiations between the Oceanside Teachers Association and Oceanside Unified School District. These are known as the sunshine letters. Once the board approves our reopening, we'll be able to have our bargaining teams begin to meet and have dates uh, planned between now and the end of the school year to um, engage in negotiations for the 2022-23 school year. Thank you for the explanation. All right, we have public comment on item 5B. We have one, Todd Madison. All right, me again. Sorry, you're gonna have to hear from me a couple times tonight. So um, here we see the union is intent on improving salaries and benefits, improving. Um, let's actually look at the data on those salaries and benefits so we know what we're trying to improve. Let's make sure the board and the parents of OUSD know those numbers as well. Any board that truly cared about our kids and making financially responsible and transparent decisions would ask the staff to prepare these numbers and present them to the, at a board meeting to parents as well. 
but we won't see that because it isn't about looking at real data and making decisions that benefit our kids. As we've seen in many rounds in the past, this is about justifying yet another round of bonus raises for adults to be paid for out of our kids' education. Willful ignorance helps make that happen. Fortunately, even if our board and district don't want to look at the data, the data is still there. From Oceanside's actual pay records, which I must thank them for providing to Transparent California under a Legal Public Records Act request and are available at transparentcalifornia.com, anyone who wants to check those numbers is welcome to do that. It's just math. I'd be happy to go through them with anyone personally if they'd like. I've said this for years, but no one ever wants to do that. It would be much harder to plausibly deny you knew what you were doing when it comes time to cut from kids, um, wouldn't it? In 2020, the median total paycheck compensation of an OUSD certificated employee was $93,673. Total compensation, including contribution to retirement plans and other benefits, $124,688. The US Census Bureau says the same year, San Diego County residents with education comparable to our teachers made $77,730. I assume we trust the US Census Bureau as a data provider. In pay only, that's about $16,000 a year more with the same education. Meanwhile, is everyone aware certificated employees get about 27% of their gross pay contributed to their retirement for them every year? That's 27% and that's a fact. If we account for comparable social security contributions and 401k matches, teachers get almost 16% more from their employer toward their retirement than private employees do. With a pay rate of 94,000, that means they get $15,000 a year more put into their retirement than most listening to this. Anyone out there can do the math on what their 401k would be worth if their employer put that much money into it. It's a benefit worth a couple million dollars in retirement. How much more improvement do we need? Especially when it's taken from our kids. In this negotiation, we're here, we'll hear about how it's all about the kids, we always do. Remember his joke, Joe's quote, look at the value? In the last round of bonus raises, the OTA president scored another $9,000 on top of her $194,000 a year in compensation. Our superintendent took advantage of the Me Too raise to add $15,000 on top of the 341. What We see what you value. Um, it's clearly not the education of our kids. Thank, thank you, thank Todd. You. All right. <laughs> Item 5B. Proposed reopener by the Oceanside Teachers Association to negotiate with the Oceanside Unified School District for the 2022-23 school year. Do I have a motion to approve? Yes. We have a first and a second. Any questions for staff? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to 5C. This is the proposed reopener for the Oceanside Unified School District to negotiate the Oceanside Teachers Association for, did I already mention that one? No, 2022-23 school year. Wait, no, I'm looking. Sorry, you guys. It's just the reverse, they're open or not. Are there, rear, okay. And do we have any speakers on that as well? All right. All right, Todd. Thank you. Okay, me again. Um, so this is the other side of the coin. So um, here we see the proposal from OUSD to ODA, which essentially mirrors the ODA proposal. Um, I wish we could count on our district actually negotiating on behalf of parents rather than negotiating for themselves, but we already know, again, that's not true, right? I've brought up the fact that there are no parents in the negotiating team before and been told by my board member that he is my representative in that. I don't know that he's on the negotiating team, but it would be nice if some spine was involved. I'd be happy to meet that negotiating team, by the way. Since there is no one truly representing parents in this process, all the negotiation is in the hands of district administrators and union representatives. It's two lions and a lamb deciding on dinner, and the lamb isn't even in the room. Does anyone, and everyone know what a Me Too raise is? Too? I'm sure you guys do. A Me Too raise happens when a school district negotiates a bonus raise with its labor groups and then immediately applies the same raise to the people who did the, ne the negotiating. I was once in charge of negotiating pay for a division of a national retailer. How sweet would that have been if giving an employer a bigger raise, I could have gotten a bigger raise myself? That's crazy. I think every single person listening to this can understand what's wrong with that. What incentive is there to hold the line on a bonus raise for an employee when they can simply make up reasons why they need to agree to all the demands and then in the end get more money themselves? That makes no sense at all. 
We've already covered the making up reasons thing. Earlier this week, I was chatting with a group about this, and someone in the group mentioned he thought this was out-and-out -out corruption. I objected at the time, thinking it's really just a lack of ethics, morals, and poor governance by the board, the usual, not actual corruption. I've kind of rethought that, and I take it back. I think it's true, it is true corruption in the form of I do something for you, you do something for me, both enriched by the deal. Mutual backscratching at its finest. But we will once again see that happen here, and very few parents will stand at this podium letting you know that they know what they see what you're doing. After the last round of negotiations, where our negotiating team gave away almost $10 million, the board approved $8 million in future cuts from our kids. Including in those cuts is the result of the Me Too raise, giving an additional, as I said earlier, $15,000 a year to our superintendent. Todd McAteer stood to make another $12,000 a year. He's the chief guy negotiating this. And as I've said before, literally taking candy from babies just because you could do it. It seems pretty reprehensible to me. Let's do something different this time and represent the interests of parents and kids in this negotiation, not just the interests of employees. Can we do that? Thank you. All right, I will entertain a motion for 5C. I'll make a motion. So we have a motion, we have a second. Any questions for staff? Seeing none. All in favor of approving item 5C, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item 5D, the approval of the MOU between Oceanside Unified School District and the California School Employee Association and its Chapter 370 Professional Growth Award. Yes, this item is for board approval. Uh, CSEA recently ratified this. It expands the uh, accessibility for the professional growth awards, which are course units taken by our employees as they expand their, prof their professional development. Um, this will improve CSE ac access to this. Um, it allows up to two professional growth awards per year um, and expands credit for classes that will be accepted. Thanks for the explanation. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. First and a second. Do we have any questions for staff? I, I love that we are encouraging our employees to Can't hear. better themselves. That's great. And become better employees. All right. <coughs> it's pro professional growth. Okay. I will. You guys, we don't. This is a board meeting in public. So. Cat calling is not okay. If you wanted to make public comment, you need to fill out a public comment card. Thank you. All right. Um, we have a first and a second for item 5D. All in favor of approving 5D, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Moving on to fi item 5E, approval of new class specification, instructional assistant, transitional kindergarten. <laughs> As the district prepares for the 22-23 school year, there are new state requirements for transitional kindergarten staffing. It requires 24 to 2 staffing ratios. This is anticipation of that. We've created a new class specification called the Instructional Assistant Transition Kindergarten that we will use to position those people into those positions for next year. Thanks for the explanation. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I'll second. Oh, we have a First and a second. Do we have any questions for staff? Exciting. We'll continue right. to expand our TK. All right. All in favor of approving Someone item 5E, e, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. Moving on to item 5F approval of revised school calendar for the 2022 23 school year. I believe we have a public comment for that, but I'll let staff. We have one, Todd Madison. All right. I'm wearing a path here. So, um, okay, so here we are again discussing the calendar. Um, so whether the revisions to it are good for families or not, I can't say, it's not my thing to, to make. What I can say, however, and what is very clear is the fact that the district does not respect parents enough to actually include them in the process of establishing the school calendar. There's absolutely nothing more important than a parent's day-to-day -day life than their child's school calendar. It controls everything. Like when we go to work, when we stay home, when we can go shopping, when we schedule car maintenance, when we have to find daycare, um, when we can take vacation and when we can't. If you read the parties involved in the calendar committee, you'll notice that includes representatives of CSEA, OTA, and the leadership team. 
the word parent doesn't appear. Several years ago, I stood at this podium in front of Dr. Coleman at the time, pointed out the fact that the most important thing you can do affecting parents' daily life schedules had absolutely zero input from parents. At the time, Dr. Coleman recognized the truth of that, pulled the calendar under consideration, gave it to the DPAC um, for consideration. Stacy and I were in charge of the DPAC at that time. This was back when both of us still thought parent input was important to the district. We put the two versions of the calendars up for a vote, DPAC voted, one of the calendars won by one vote. The version I voted for lost, um, but I stood here at the meeting following letting the board know that the DPAC had approved that version of the calendar. That process has never happened again that I know of. We get it, we totally understand that the district and the board have no interest in paying attention to parent input on anything with significant impact on the education of our kids unless it happens to be good for employees as well. But does anyone but me think that being totally ignored on something that with the impact of calendaring has on fi family schedules represents a particularly egregious example of ignoring parents? When I was a child, my mother told me not to pay attention to what people say, but to pay attention to what they do. We see what our board and our district does, and it does not involve prioritizing our parents or our kids. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'll make a motion to approve item 5F. Yeah. Oh, Dr. We got a president. Dr. Bean, I'd like to add I one one piece to that, so thank you. Right. Um, we're asking the board to approve this calendar, which will um, give us the start and end date of the school year, as well as the holidays, so that the community can plan around that. We would ask and request that there is amendment to it to allow our calendar committee to work on making an adjustment to the semester um, date that's currently on the calendar. We need to do a little bit more analysis to make sure that the semesters are balanced. Um, but beyond that, we'd like you to approve the calendar as is with the um, amendment to the semester date. Thank you, sorry. I'll make a motion to approve. Any questions? So how, do, how do you move the semester date? Would you have to move days that are, the kids are out of school? No, the no, calendar would not change. Point. This would just be the academic semester date. So this would just be when finals would take place and making sure that the two semesters are closely aligned as possible given the parameters of the, the calendar itself. Okay, I'm gonna make my yearly plea on calendar day that next year we try and make sure that uh, the general election or the voting day is off for, so that families can have their kids with them when they go to vote, hopefully during the day. And we show the importance of civic participation. So hopefully next year that can get into the committee. And maybe if the committee is looking at some changes, they can bring that back too. <laughs> All right. We have a first and a second. I'll call for a vote. All in favor, approving item 5F, say aye. 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 All right, motion carries 5-0. Moving on to item six, business. 6A is the approval of resolution number 35, approving sale of property garrison and making related findings. I'll turn this over to staff. Thank you, Dr. Begin. Before I go through the description, I just wanna note that there's an error in the posted agenda. If you look at the analysis part, we have the word the city listed when actually we're selling this portion of the garrison parcel to a developer, Vandale. The Oceanside Unified School District owns approximately 11.2 acres sorry, of real property. We, yeah. we do have two public comments oh, on this I'm sorry. before we get started. Okay. okay. Finish presenting the item, Mandy. Oh, okay. Um, owns approximately 11.2 acres of real property located at Garrison Elementary. On June 23rd, 2020, the board adopted a recommendation by the district's facility advisory 711 committee to declare the parcel surplus. On December 14, 2021, the board authorized staff to proceed with negotiation of a letter of intent and subsequent purchase and sale agreement with the developer, Vandale Homes, for the purchase of the remaining 8.2 acres of the property. In order to facilitate the development of the property, the district, the city, and buyer will enter into a cooperative agreement. Accordingly, the district now desires to enter into the negotiated PSA, whereby Vandale will purchase the 8.2 acres of the property for $16 million. This resolution approves the sale of the property pursuant to the PSA and authorizes staff to move forward with the execution of the PSA and sale of property pursuant to its terms, and it determines that the sale is exempt from CEQA and authorizes <coughs> staff to file a notice of exemption. 
We have Victoria and Patty. Victoria. Hey. Good evening. I'd like to speak to the district's proposal, uh, proposed sale of part of Garrison Elementary School site to a housing developer for the tune of $16 million. As sad as it is to know that Garrison is closed forever and that the land of our beloved school is being sold, it seems fair to suggest that the total sales when all of the land is sold will exceed the cost of the current San Luis Rey modernization, which is around $18 million. Several members of the modernization committee, including myself and board member Alvarez, have repeatedly asked for the ceiling of the soon-to-be Pablo Talk multi-purpose building to be raised during the modernization process to provide optimal sight lines and acoustics for student performances. Raising only the area above the stage does not allow sound to project outward to the audience. The current ceiling height of the San Luis Rey multi-purpose room creates a dark, claustrophobic feeling which is not conducive to a musical or theatrical performance. District leaders have said that they do not want to pay any additional costs that would accrue if the ceiling were to be raised. However, in light of tonight's proposed $16 million price tag on just part of the Garrison campus and the district's plan to remodel Reynolds Elementary with a starting budget of $50 million, it is glaringly obvious that there is no equity among schools in Oceanside Unified. Garrison and San Luis Rey, two of the oldest schools in the district, have been fighting for remodel since at least 2007. And we can't get a ceiling blowout to support our performing arts focus, but Reynolds' initial remodels budget at its inception is already more than two times greater than that of the SLR remodel. How is that fair? Oh, it's not fair. Uh, with all due respect to Reynolds, it's located in close proximity to both Libby and Del Rio, two schools that have been remodeled. Since the district closed Garrison, San Luis Rey is the only school in a very large area, forcing some SLR students still to walk over two miles to and from school each way. I do not object to remodeling Reynolds. I just simply believe that all schools should be treated fairly and that both district leaders and board members should consider stakeholders' input and not solely rely on district rhetoric when making important financial decisions that will have ramifications for years to come. In closing, I just emphatically implore both the board and the district to meet the needs of the San Luis Rey students and staff by blowing out the ceiling of the NPR during our modernization project to create a stellar performance space for our stupendous Seagator scholars. Thank you. And Patty K. That was an excellent presentation, I must admit. Uh, my, my comments are a little bit late to the uh, discussion of the sale of Garrison. Um, however, I know that you have, the board has already previously voted in unanimously to sell the land to a developer. Um, so whatever you decide tonight, you know, uh, you'll probably go forward with it. However, uh, the person that had the details is unable at the last minute to be here. Uh, uh, but in summary, it uh, is acknowledged that you, by choosing not to sell to the city of Oceanside, they, for a larger amount of money, you, you basically, and you are denying the, the students that you seem to so care about, um, the much needed sports fields that they needed. The Garrison School site, has already groomed fields, it has restroom facilities, et cetera, and you all have voted that you'd rather um, you know, go for the developer fees than satisfy the requirements needed by the city of Oceanside for the sports fields. So that was my comment, thank you. Thank you, Patty. Right. Item 6A, I'll entertain a motion on this? to yeah. approve. Motion to yes. approve. We have a motion. I'll second that. A motion and a second. Do we have any questions for staff? Did uh, the city offer to buy the garrison property and turn it into a park? No. Oh, okay. Not to my knowledge. Okay. So we didn't have an offer to turn it into anything. Our, 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 our initial. Uh, suggestion to the city was that they buy it all and then we felt they could make good use of it and they declined to do that. Just you to chose to buy the just the three value. acres, that's correct. All right. So, call for the question. All right, 
I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 6A, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Item seven. Oh, do we have, I'm making sure we got all our public comments so far. Item seven, policy development. Item seven A is approval of resolution number 34, reclaiming the month long celebration of school library month and school librarian and library media technician appreciation day, which is April 13th, 2022. Thank you, Dr. Begin. I'll be reading the proclamation. Resolution 34 states that whereas April is School Library Month and April 13th is 2022 has been designated as School Librarian and Library Media Technician Appreciation Day, and whereas school libraries provide materials that will develop literacy, cultural, aesthetic appreciation, ethical standards, and whereas school libraries provide materials which reflect the ideas and beliefs of religious, social, political, historical, and ethnic groups and their contributions to the American and world heritage and culture, and whereas the school library is to ensure that students and staff are effective users of ideas and information, and whereas the school librarian and or library media technician's role is to develop the leadership and expertise necessary to ensure that the school library is an integral part or of the instructional program of the school, and whereas the Oceanside Unified School, Oceanside Unified school District Board of Education has entrusted the school librarian and or library media technician in each school to teach the skills of locating and using information through traditional resources and new technologies to provide literature appreciation activities and to guide and encourage content and recreational reading to every student. And whereas lifelong learning begins and is systemically, systematically, excuse me, developed through the school library curriculum of the elementary and secondary schools and whereas the school library contributes to the individual growth and development of all students while fostering both excellence and equity in education. Whereas the school library personnel or school librarians and or library media technicians of the Oceanside Unified School District have dedicated themselves to the work for quality school libraries for all students. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Oceanside Unified School District does hereby proclaim April 13th, 2022 as School Librarian and Library Media Technician Appreciation Day and April 2022 as School Library Month in all of the public schools and calls upon school administrators, teachers, students, and citizens of Oceanside to recognize and support this action and to participate throughout the month of April in the celebration of School Library Month. Thank you. Thank you for reading that. I have a comment about the library. In middle school and high school, I spent my lunch hour every single day, every school day in the library. And as an undergraduate of San Diego State, I was fortunate to be able to work in the library, especially in the education library, which enabled me and laid the foundation for me to be able to be a highly effective educator. To me, the library was, was my sanctuary. I'll put it quite simply. And I lived, I lived in Pacific Beach at the time and Point Loma area. And going to the library was just the joy of my life. On the weekends as well as during the school, school days, as I said, I was in the library. And, and every Saturday I did go to the public library. So in terms of becoming a lifelong learner, in terms of um, just gaining appreciation of books, and education and the experience of, of all the dynamics that the library offered, you know, I feel that I, I, um, I profited. And I'm very thankful that we do have books in the library. And I know as an administrator, I always encourage my teachers to have a classroom library. So, thank you. I would like to make a motion to adopt the resolution. And thank you so much for your kind words. Second. All right, we have a first and a second. Any questions for staff? No public comment either? All right, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of approving item 7A, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. So tonight we have eight public comments and we are going to take a 10 minute break to get those organized and to take a biology break. So you have our utmost attention. 
It is right now 7.40, so we will be back in 10 minutes. We have 10 public comments tonight, so we're very excited. Thank you for your patience. We need to take a biology break. So I'm going to turn it over to Micah. He's going to call off several at a time. We have Anthony Flores, Wayne Godamet, and then Rudy Kraut. Kraus, my apologies. All right. Uh, thank you, Madam President and members of the board. Um, first time speaker, so I'm <laughs> very, very grateful for the opportunity. Um, I wanted to talk about field access and some of the issues we've been having. Um, I'm a father of five. All of my kids play rugby. I have four daughters, one, one son. Um, and I represent Thunder Rugby here tonight. Uh, we've had multiple issues trying to obtain fields in the city of Oceanside, and I know that's a city issue. Uh, but I'm here tonight to talk about possibly getting, gaining access to school fields and, and school facilities. Um, there are a number of fields um, out there, and for whatever reason, it just it, it seems difficult to obtain access. Um, rugby is a very fast-growing sport and has given my kids wonderful opportunities to travel. A couple years ago, we were able to travel to Portugal to go international to play ball, um, and even nationwide. They played in tournaments in Texas and Arkansas. I have a daughter right now who's out there in Florida training to play in a pretty big tournament. All from Oceanside, representing Oceanside, yet we cannot practice in the city of Oceanside. We have to practice in other cities, other schools, we're at Valley Middle School in Carlsbad, Army, Navy. Right now we're at Calaveras Middle School practicing. When most of our kids are from the city of Oceanside, go to Oceanside schools, especially our girls teams. About 70, 75% of the girls team is from Oceanside, who attend Oceanside, El Camino, and MLK, and even um, girls here at Chavez. Um, it's just, it's just sad thing that we have to go outside of our city to practice and have games. We, re we recently hosted games in the city of San Diego, close over there to um, Cathedral Catholic High School. A team from Oceanside hosting games in the city of San Diego, you know, because we cannot get access to Oceanside fields. And that's the whole city of Oceanside. All the youth, we're in desperate need of fields, we're in desperate need of field lights, we're in desperate need of field upgrades, including the school fields. So, I'm just here to ask that we, we help facilitate that, that the school board facilitate a conversation or vice versa with the city of Oceanside so we can gain access to the school. Um, our kids, our youth, the sports um, programs teach invaluable lessons. We've heard a lot of great things with education, you know, and, and, and parents concerned with the kids' education, but there are sports programs too that teach invaluable life lessons and heavy believer in that. Um, so again, thank you for your time, and I just hope we can facilitate that conversation between the school board and the city of Oceanside and the Parks and Rec Commission. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you. Next, we have Wayne. Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for having me today, and I want to thank all of you for what you do, and I really appreciate um, the work that you do for students here in Oceanside. Uh, as I sat there in the back, uh, I, I recognized uh, a few people going way back, uh, you know, up there, uh, board members, a few administrators, and some of the people in the audience go back many years. Been volunteering in the city, primarily in the rough neighborhoods that are claimed by the gangs in Oceanside. We went from 15 down to about 11 right now. And then also, um, uh, you know, just working in the schools and appreciating a lot of the support uh, we had from the teachers. back in. 80s and 90s, um, uh, we developed the Cup Stack program, and I was out in the, all of your schools, and uh, it, it's in history. I'm writing the book of Cup Stack. Uh, Mr. Frazier here flew to Japan with his wife during the uh, Sister City uh, deals to represent the city of Oceanside in Fuji, Japan, uh, also with the mayor and these guys into American Samoa. So tonight I'm here on behalf of Save Our Streets. That was the group that was started when Dan Besson was shot and killed. Uh, when we had the panel that interviewed uh, your superintendent, yeah, you know, that was the first time in, uh, since 2006, that morning showing up to the panel for the interviews, um, I sat next to Steve Besson. It was the first time I met him. Now, as a Samoan, uh, if I showed up to that interview at the district office and he showed up, 
and I didn't do or was involved in what we did in developing Save Our Streets after Dan was shot and killed, I would have walked out and went home in shame. That's how passionate we are about our community and our youth. And those kids that were Samoan, we tried. We tried hard to talk to them about the gang life and doing what they did. Uh, so it was important for us and it's still important today, uh, maybe 15 years later from doing that, um, because I was supposed to meet Dan the next night to talk about what was going on in the Batgate area in the students. So it's important then, it's important now, we're still doing it and it's a complete volunteer effort. Uh, altruism, you know, protecting the volunteers to do the work that they do. Tonight, I'm on patrol tonight from about 10 till 1.30 in the morning in Balderrama Park, East Side neighborhood, Crown Heights behind Oceanside High School. So Anthony that just spoke attended a meeting on March 2nd and that was an ad hoc meeting focused on fields and facilities. And it was from there, they had about 12 or 14 of the sports coaches and mentors that deal with your kids in schools. And that's when we learned about the fields here with the Facilitron. And our proposal tonight is to please consider going forward, making an agenda item possibly, and we'd like to thank Raquel for bringing that to our attention. She came to the ad hoc uh, committee meeting on March 2nd with the Parks and Rec Department. Is establishing uh, or getting a human being, a person to work with your mentors and coaches in the city versus the Facilitron. That's why we're here, you know, just to put that in your minds and thoughts. Appreciate it, thank you very much. Thank you, Wayne. Next we have Rudy. Hi, my name is Rudy Kraus. There's six doctors here. We're talking about COVID and the COVID vaccine. You guys know nothing, you know zero. I'm gonna be nominated for a Nobel Prize in the field of microbiology. I've made the most important discovery in COVID, that COVID is an anaerobic virus parasite. It is an anaerobic virus. It lives without oxygen. This is why you never mask, because you feed the parasite. You deoxify your body, it grows the virus parasite in your body. You masked, all of you bought into it. CDC, Fauci, no one in the world knows this. It is an anaerobic virus parasite. I am the one who discovered it. Here's a book that you need to read. Anaerobic parasitic protozoa. It'll cost you $260. You need to learn about anaerobic virus parasites. My book, 2021, Origin of the Species, Homo sapien vaccinicus, Human COVID Virus Parasite. If you survived the first vaccine shot and the second and the booster, you're now at stage two. Adverse reactions and death is stage one. Stage two is symbiosis with the parasite. What you guys did was unfathomable. You shot the entire DNA platform of the COVID virus vulgaris parasite into your genome. You are now becoming symbiotic with it. You added 15,000 parasite genes to your genome. They are mutating your body. You can't get them out. These are immortal stem cells. It's like the immortal, the immortal jellyfish. You can't kill it. This is Dr. Carrie Madej and her famous mycoscopy. She's the first person to photograph at 1600 amplification the COVID virus parasite. The spike protein is at the nano level, at the, an at the atomic level. That's like 40 nanos big, 40 atoms big. It grows up, it becomes 30 microns. That's like sperm and eggs growing up and making an adult human. But it doesn't stop there. It grows throughout the entire circulatory system of all of the vaccinated. Microscopic blood clots, that's what I'm interested in. You got your macroscopic that the- Thank you, Rudy. You're giving everyone the sickness. Thank you. 
right. The next three speakers will be Emily Wichman, Brad Tobias, and then Todd Madison. Emily. Hello, Emily. I'd like to, um, to report to the board the Ethnic Studies um, Community Advisory Committee. Uh, we've had two meetings, and we're going to have a third one on, on uh, this week. I want to thank Dr. Loris for his work with us. In our uh, conversations have been very interesting, and uh, especially those with a higher education academia compared to the realistic high school graduation ideas. Um, we have our membership is, is somewhat diverse, but not a lot. We have a committee member who has um, rewritten the present ethnic studies course, and it looks favorable and promising. Our conversations are so lively, and I'm hoping that I want, because of the liveliness of our conversation and some of the understanding that's the give and the take, I want our ethnic studies course to be one that will enhance critical thinking and be a blend and of a broad and a revelant and revelant, revelant ideology. I do have a concern. There is a bill, uh, AB2235, and I'm concerned it's on ethnic studies uh, teacher credentialing. It says it tends to standardize, standardize the, the that guy kind of, <laughs> kind of got me hyper here, so. <clears throat> um, it's standardize the teachers, credentialing process for ethnic studies, a subject, subject area that was recently added as a high school graduation requirement. Uh, AB 2235, it's, gonna, it's to specifically the bill would authorize a commission of teachers credentialing to develop and or add a supplementary authorization in ethnic studies and to grant authorization to a credit, accredited holder based on the commission's requirement. The commission's requirement well, ethnic studies is a political ball game, and it has been, and it will continue to be, uh, because commissioners are political appointments from the governor. Um, and so the issue is, of course, as we've been hearing about, there is critical race theory, there's diversity, there's equity, there's inclusion in most ethnic studies programs, okay? And that's just the back and forth of politics. So I'm asking, when is that gonna stop? So my concern is, uh, it's going to be a one way. It's going to have to be the um, the ethnic studies that's that's right now in vogue. Okay, which is um, uh, the um, the liberated ethnic studies. There's also a, a constructive ethnic studies. So I'm hoping that this will go down because we cannot be so constrained in education because we have to fulfill the students' needs and to have a, a critical race theory, to have a broad spectrum. Right now, looking at the course, and everybody agrees, the course is very, very narrow, and we've got to stop that because it's our community and we have to give our kids not only playing fields, but the idea of critical thinking and race and Thank who they you, are. Thank Emily. you, Emily. Thank you. Hello, Brad. Brad. Hey, good evening, and um, I just want to say thank you uh, for, for making these, these back in person. Um, it's good to see all your faces. Um, and uh, go Pirates for anybody that's still here. No? OK. Um, so um, these in-person meetings were, were uh, should, should have been going on, you know, in my opinion, back like in, in June. Um, for you board members, I'm sure you remember my face saying these over, over Zoom, but uh, thank you for this. Um, for my discussion point tonight, uh, I just want to go ahead and, and I'm going to reference uh, Romans 13. Uh, and, that, and that is in the Bible, for those of you that, that don't know. Uh, it says respect governing authorities. Uh, and out of that respect, I want to offer you all some truth. Uh, this, I pulled some stats from the California Department of Education, uh, mainly the, the LPAC website. Uh, it's, it's a link to it. And, the, and these, these stats are for, for the district as a whole. Only 51.6% of students meet English standards, and only 30.9% meet math standards. Just in, in English math the basics, the basics of edu education. By those metrics, put in, and we have a bunch of edu educators on the board, by those metrics, those are failing grades. In, in my opinion, those are your grades. But, uh, again, failing grades. 
Um, on top of that, there are, uh, you know, the budget is, is eight figures in the hole. Not good, no bueno. I, you know, that's just, you know, it, it doesn't take a, a PhD to figure that one out. The, you know, buy this, we need you all to fix this. I'm, I'm seeking this, uh, of this from, from a citizen, from a parent who goes to your schools. We need you to fix this. I'm pleading with you, I'm begging with you. Fix this. There's, there's, six, there's six doctors here. Y'all got the education. Y'all know, y'all, y'all know, y'all know how, to, how to solve problems. All right, we need, you, we need you to listen to us. Month after month after month, it's the same stuff. Ethnic studies, CRT, the finances, um, you know, and, and I can, can go on and on and on, and nothing's getting fixed. Are, are these even, even being, being addressed in, in private, in other conversations? Y'all sit here and say, this is, this is a public, this is a board meeting held in public. There's no conversation going on. It's nothing but 5-0 votes, square across it, maybe one comment, um, but, there's, but there's nothing. There's, there's nothing. There's, there's sidebars about other personal stuff, but no, but no actual legit conversation. We need you to represent us. We need you to have those conversations. Maybe it'll, it'll offer some public confidence if, if, if you have those conversations and, 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 ha- and have those questions for us. Please help us out. Side note on ethnic studies. You know, it's, it's a woke ideology. Um, has there, this is maybe for, for you, Dr. Sparks, has there been, has there been any, any statistical data to prove that all this pushing of, of diversity, equity, and inclusion is being beneficial for, for school, i.e. from test scores, behavior numbers, and more? Um, you know, this is my challenge to you. Can, can, you, can you provide a good, a good ballpark or, or, or good, good numbers to show why it's, why it's good? Because I don't see it. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. All right, there we go again. Last one, I promise. (laughs) So it's great to be back here in person. Um, Ideally, I'd prefer to have an option to be both in person and online. Um, There's no reason not to. Um, I've been, I've seen many uh, public meetings at school, city councils and things where they allow uh, people to, con- to participate via Zoom as well as in person. Um, I'm sure Greg and his team can handle that. They're an excellent um, source of technical resources. Um, I think we should consider that um, and do it. Um, next up, so when do we move public comment back to the beginning of the meeting? Um, as you can see, we don't exactly have a lot of people here. And um, in part, that's because we don't want, parents don't want to sit through um, you know, new clubs for their kids to school that their kids don't go to, uh, outdoor camps for fifth graders that they're not involved in, you know, all the minutia of all the different things to finally get here. And we know that um, by having it late like this, we dissuade a lot of people from attending. Um, They leave or they don't want to stay through the whole thing. But I think it's important that we actually hear that. I've heard that many times. Um, Also, just as a side thing too, when can we do presentations again? like we've done in, in public comment and in uh, on agenda comment for years before this. Um, so apparently we can't do that now. So I think that should be restored as well. Beyond that, um, I've said many times that the board appears to have forgotten who voted them into office, the parents. The board is supposed to be the voice of the parents in our district, um, but as we've seen uh, so much in the last few years, they appear to be the voice of employees and adults, not necessarily parents and their kids. We hear how important kids are, but once again, if we look at the priorities, um, we can see where the money is spent. For those watching this meeting, if you recognize this, um, if you're a person who sees problems and wants to fix them, um, how about helping to fix this one? This year is an election year. Um, It's time for parents to step up and take control of our board to make it work for kids, not for special interests. Districts one, three, and four are up for election. The district website has maps if you're not sure which district you're in, so you can go to the Board of Education section. If you're listening to this and you care about the education of our kids, it's time to step up and run. I'm the co-director of the Oceanside Parent Association. The association is planning on doing what it can to support kids first candidates in the upcoming election. If you'd like to discuss what running for board is all about, email us. Email address is oceanside.usd at parentassociation.net. That's oceanside.usd at parentassociation.net. Be sure to join the Parent Association in its fight at parentassociation.org as well. 
So let's keep up the fight to improve the education of our kids. It's been great to have all this participation in the last couple of years. We need to keep doing that. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Our final four will be Susan Custer, Mike Richardson, Patrick Herrera, and Rose Herrera. Higuera, my apologies. Good evening. I'd like to speak about an assembly bill that's being proposed. <clears throat> it's AB 2565. Uh, the California for Equal Rights, CIFR, opposes this bill. This bill would appropriate an unknown amount of money from the general fund to establish mathematics and science educator excellence block grant. The grant would also be used to advance equity and access in mathematics and science. Um, one, the reason that it, the uh, CIFR is opposed is because the, during, in this bill they want to eliminate advanced tracking and academic grouping in the name of equity. And they, it wants to focus on equity and detracking. Again, it's all about equity. Equity is not what the school needs, all the children need to have the same uh, opportunities, not an opportunity for advancement, not to be slowed down because another student of a different color or race or for any reason is not uh, able to excel. Let those who can excel. I tried to do some research on what this is all about, equity and in math instruction, so I found a book Equity, a pathway to equity and in math instruct, equity, equitable math instruction. And it's about dismantling white supremacy in the math classroom by making visible the toxic characteristics of white supremacy. This does not seem to be what math should be focused on. Um, the, the, one of the way they want to do this is to expose students to mathematics mathematicians of color, particularly women of color, and queer mas mathematicians of color. Again, that has nothing to do with math. Math is about equations and word problems and the times tables and all the things the rest of us learn. The best approach to math would be to help all students achieve the highest level possible regardless of their color, gender, gender, or sexual preference. Allow students to move higher, to higher levels of math as they are ready. Math is definitely one subject that is blind to race, gender, etc. The current students will be competing in a world where other countries have been taught to excel, and, they, and these other countries are not focused on race and gender. The parents in this country and this school district need for their children to have those same opportunities to excel. Uh, it seems that focusing Thank on- Thank you, Susan. Do I get into my best talk? <laughs> Mike. Good evening. About a year ago, I started coming to these board meetings because I discovered that you had stopped teaching the Constitution and stopped requiring eighth graders to pass a comprehensive test on the Constitution or to graduate, as I did in 1955 when I graduated from Jefferson Junior High School. I've heard that that happened in the 80s or 90s, Some I don't know. So I've been coming for a year uh, or so, and at every meeting, we have passionate people, sincere people, logical, common sense people make their case. And I've never once heard any discussion or conversation or debate or uh, disagreement between you. You all just vote 5-0. I, I think that every single vote has been 5-0. So, but there is an issue that I really, hope you'll have serious debate about. Uh, you all have heard that the Florida legislature passed a law recently that 
forbid and outlawed uh, teaching of sexual education, I mean, I mean sexual orientation and gender identity to kindergarten through fourth, uh, third grade. Frankly, I can't understand why you'd teach that to anybody, but let's, let's just take it from there. I would like to ask this board to establish that policy that you will forbid the teaching of sexual orientation or gender identity in grades kindergarten through uh, third grade. Hopefully we can do better in the future. And I would really like to see somebody make a motion and move forward on that. You know, we have uh, Eleanor, you're a registered Republican, a parent, you know, seemingly a decent person who believes in common decency. Mike, you're a registered Republican. Raquel, you're a reasonable person. The three of you could pass that kind of a rule and out overrule and, uh, and, and uh, dismiss the far left liberals that make up the other two seats on this board. Please consider that. Also like to request that you consider, and you can't do it tonight, but that you look into Assembly Bill 1785, which was specifically written for California, and it is entitled the California Parents' Bill of Rights Act. This bill does probably more than you want to do, but you should look into it. I wish the, the board would, would uh, uh, support it and endorse it. That's AB 1785. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Patrick. Proverbs 31, 8 through 9, King Lehu sees, says, Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights and all who are dis destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. Proverbs also says, There is nothing that is done, in, done or said in the dark that will not be revealed in the light. Matthew 18, 6, 7 says this, Whoever causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, it would be better for them if a millstone were hung around their neck and they were, and they were drowned in the depths of the sea. A millstone is two tons, by the way. All of you guys are public servants. And... Um, why don't you listen to the parents? I don't understand that. Why don't you protect the kids? I don't understand that. You're like bullies to these kids, teaching them CRT, BLM, you know, gender confusion, LGBT. You know, we've said time and time again, you know, your job, which is evident that you've forgotten, is teaching our kids reading, writing, arithmetic, US history, about young men who died on the beaches of Normandy to give you the right to sit there. I don't know if you guys remember that or not. You know, teach our kids our constitution. Be proud Americans. It almost sounds like you're not proud Americans. If you don't wanna be Americans, you don't have to be here. You can always leave. You don't have to stay here, you know? Be proud Americans, teach them, you know, the Bill of Rights and teach them, we want you, we've said it time and time again, we want you to teach them traditional family values. That's what we want. And I'm speaking to Mike and Eric now, okay? You guys are the men on this board, okay? You're on the men on this board. And if something happens in your house, I would hope that you're the first to get out of bed and to protect who's in your home, you know? This, is the, this board is your home. Okay, why aren't you doing anything for the kids? Why aren't you protecting them? I'm talking to, to you guys, to, to both of you guys, you know. Stand up for the kids. Have a voice. Be men. Be American men. I'm not, I'm not trying to say you're not men, but you know what? If you got, you know what? If you got, um, where's my note? If you have no courage, you have no honor. If you got no honor, what are you? You're not a man. 
I need you guys to have honor and courage to stand up against what's right. Protect these kids. I don't even have kids in school anymore, but I'm here trying to fight for them, and I need you guys to fight for them, please. Thank you, Patrick. Hi, so I want to raise awareness for two bills, SB 1045, which is a parental review of the classroom instruction materials. So this is a bill that's going to come up before the voters. So the instructor would be required to provide parents and guardians with copies of the lesson plans and supplemental instruction materials three days before the academic year. Um, also, SB 1785, which is the California Bill of Rights, Act. It gives the parents the right to participate in their child's education, their decision making, access to the minor children's education, uh, the matters of discipline, and controversial curricular um, contents. It's kind of funny that we're in a day and age that we actually need a bill to be passed to give power to the parents. Um, those are our children. They're not your children. Um, we're responsible for them and we're their greatest teachers and so we want to be the ones that teach them values and morals from our standpoint. Um, the school doesn't have the right to teach them all this garbage which you've all heard about CRT, LGBTQ. We do need to raise our grades in math, science, and English and allow our kids the opportunity to compete in a global society um, without all this hatred that's being taught to them. And um, it's really evident too that this board, I don't even know if you read the agenda because um, the boards that you, the books that you approved are disgusting. My friend Dahmer, Jeffrey Dahmer, is that seriously something our kids need to read about a, a guy that was a serial killer that went and killed homosexual boys? No, they don't. And Nietzscheing, Buddhist writings, uh, another one, No Way They Were Gay, um, Picture of Dorian Gray, It's a Gay Love Affair, uh, a book called Queer, LGBTQ Guide, seriously, Red, White, and Royal Blue, another gay love story. Um, it's just very, very evident where the school is going in a direction that we as parents and community members, we do not want. Marriage is instituted by God and therefore man can't, can't disassemble that. And so we are um, traditional people here in Oceanside that believe in marriage. We are the foundation of the community. Children need one man, one woman. They need the chance to grow up in a stable environment, not with all this confusion that you guys are trying to teach them. So be people, be men and women of valor and honor and do your job or resign because we do need people that are brave. You guys just vote yes, yes, yes for everything. I don't even know if you guys read the agenda. It's so important. Our kids are our future. Thank so you, So fight Rosie. for them and do your job. All right, that concludes our public comment tonight. Our next item on the agenda is item nine, board and staff discussion. I'm looking over at my colleagues. Do you have anything? All right. Yeah. Okay. I just want to uh, have an announcement. The adult transition program now has a thrift store. Um, they, they receive donations from the community and students are being taught all aspects of retail, accounting, running a business. I would appreciate, we would, the board would appreciate, the district would appreciate if you could frequent the store and buy something. You know, it's clothing and houseware goods, I think. All right? Thank you. Uh, Surfside, Donald, would you please ex expand on this? The store at ATP, the thrift store, it's at their campus right outside of the parking lot when you drive in. It's Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So today was their grand opening. It's cash only, so please bring your cash and they have a lot of wonderful items. Um, you can follow our social media handles and um, get updated information. But if you missed it today, it's tomorrow as well and it's gonna be every Tuesday and Wednesday over at ATP. 
707 Cary Road. <laughs> I just had a couple of things I wanted to bring up during our discussion. One is that um, I am proud that we do have new books that are coming in that show love from all kinds of different families. I think it's really important that families, that kids see their own families in our libraries and, and uh, that we affirm love between all peoples. I would also say that um, I'd like to see something on one of our upcoming agendas about how we're going to capture kids. I feel like there's some feedback. Um, we have, we know that the declining enrollment is across our region, but there are ways to um, bring families onto our school sites and see the amazing things that we do. So I'd love to see what our strategy is moving into the summertime, moving into next year, how we're attracting new families. Um, it's really important as, as we see the Oceanside population changing and there's lots of new development around certain corridors, like how are we capitalizing on that? How are we making sure that people know in the community what we're doing is all these amazing things. Now's not the appropriate time. We can have comments after if you'd like to talk. Um, I'd also love to see uh, what our plan is and our roadmap is for making ethnic studies a graduation requirement. I know that there is a timeline by the state that we have to do, but I would, I would love to see what our plan is because we have control over when we implement that. And then the last piece that I'd like at some point and this doesn't have to be a big thing, but I am, I am personally curious about how we do facilities when it comes to someone approaching to use our fields. I'd love it if our, if our policy on facilities reflected our values in the, the sense that organizations that are nonprofit or that are volunteer-based or that are not charging kids fees, I'd like to see them get priority. And I don't know if we do that now or if we could have some kind of brief presentation on how we do that in any kind of direction to support making sure that our local organizations that are doing amazing work have access to our fields, our fields and also these libraries that we're talking about. I mean, I don't know if there are programs that want to do stuff in the schools also, not just on the fields, but I'd just like to hear about that for off school hours, if possible. Thanks. Anybody else? Yeah, I do. I actually do. Um, I want to um, just highlight too for EC, um, El Camino, yes, I'm talking about El Camino. Um, the Athlete of the Week um, for, um, you, the UT um, gave Athlete of the Week to one of our students, um, Hawken Miller, who has done some amazing work. I mean, he was on the football team and he did amazing work there, right? He's an amazing student. But the, the important thing with even like Hawken Miller is that he has, he has kept his academic part a priority in everything that he's done. And so that has been amazing with the coaches and everybody and the staff that have focused on the academic part for our students and they made that the priority. So I appreciate that. And then um, even for Tripler who who's, was named by the UT um, Athlete of the Month. And again, academics again is a very important for our athletes and, and for me because of my kids in, in sports, we focus on that, especially in our house, on that being an, an important thing. And so for our coaches to see that and for our staff to see that and for our teachers and everybody around and our librarians as we go around and we see this, you know, and because I know that like my kid with having to work through a paper right now with his teachers and stuff, going to the library was huge and finding the information they needed to in the schools. And so having all that was important. So I just want to, as we celebrate and, and lift up our librarian texts and support and um, our librarians that remember that all the work that they're doing because they're not only there just as I was in, in at Libby you know I was talking to the librarian there and just the support and the, the who they are for our students they're not only just there to to show them the books that we have and to check them out and everything but they're also the ones that are there for their computers when their computers crash or they break or whatever is going on but they're there when they just need somebody to talk to or a shoulder to cry on because they're just support because of the different things that are going on either it be at home or whatever it's just life and so they're there for support for them for that too so I just want to thank them and appreciate them in that aspect because sometimes we forget that there's all these different peoples and the different staff that we have around our schools the little things that they do because of the support that they are for our students it's not just the the sports that are the highlighter the 
the things that are going on, but the things that they do outside of that. You know, we look at teachers that are doing the, the food pantries at our school sites that make sure that the food is there so our students have, so they don't have the issues that they have of not being able to feel comfortable or the energy to be able to get through a class. They're able to make this happen and to grow these programs within their schools and to make sure that they have those things. So I just wanna thank um, all of our staff because you're amazing. You have done some great things for our kids. We're back in school again to the new norm, right? Whatever that is, because I don't think we're any of us are normal, but, um, <laughs> but um, just thank you so much for just everything that you do for our students and just welcoming us. I know with me, because I, I just like to tend to walk into to schools and just show up wherever. And thank you for just allowing that to happen. But, um, but seeing our students just in full action and in full mode of just wanting and desiring to learn more and to be there and to, to learn again how to be with each other because there's a lot of learning aspects that are going on again because there's so much of the SEL that we're focusing on again because of, of what COVID did and the pandemic and everything that's going on. So, but being able for our students to be able to just learn and to be there with each other and for the staff to support them. I just wanna thank everybody, everyone, all, all of us are just doing our parts as much as we possibly can. And like, we're a great community, we're a great team. And because it takes a village, right? We're a community, we're, we're working together to do everything that we possibly can. So I thank everyone that's been a part of that for, and continues, you know, we look at the cup stacking even that, that encourages our students and motivates them and keeps them you know, off the streets in the afternoon because they're working with them, they're doing something different. So all those different things and all these different groups, like Eric said, you know, making sure that those groups that are working with our, stu with our students after school are being helped and are being worked with because that's important. It's important to keep them close because those are the ones that are, are doing the extra work that we can't do because we only are here a certain amount of hours because we have our own lives with our own children and everything else too. But doing those things, you know, being that extra part of that, that support within the community, that's, I, I, just, I just thank you all for that, you know, and I, the theaters and everybody else, all those groups like that, that do that extra to push our students, you know, so just thank you again. Thanks, Raquel. So I wanna humor my board colleagues. I need to make a motion that we amend the agenda to return to closed session for one remaining item. First and second, all right. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All right, so that means that we're going to step into closed session for five to 10 minutes and then we'll come back to report out and adjourn the meeting. I'd like to report out on action taken in closed session. By a vote of 5-0, the board took action to approve a settlement with employee number 432693. It was a 5-0 vote. And that concludes our meeting tonight, and we're adjourning at 8.38 p.m. Thank you.